am the third party marketing specialist here at Josh's Frogs, but I am also our hermit crab enthusiast. Um, and today I'll be showing you how to set up our 18 by 18 by 18 bioactive hermit crab kit. So first, um, this is what the tank looks like. It has a fair amount of depth here to put substrate in, though um, there is one thing that needs to be changed. Uh, screen lids like this one are not suitable for hermit crabs. Hermit crabs need high humidity and high um, temperatures in their tank. So a screen lid like this allows way too much humidity and heat to escape. So you have to set that to the side. And in the kit will come this glass lid. So this lid is specially cut to fit our 18 by 18 tanks. So it will cover the top to keep heat and humidity in. And next, um, the next step will be to fill it with substrate. At Josh's Frogs, we have our own hermit crab bio bedding. So if you've um, followed this before, you know that our bio bedding line is specially formulated for microfauna and plants to thrive. And of course, to have the best um, habitat for your animal. So in our um, four quart hermit crab bio bedding, it's already ready to go. It has um, sand already mixed in it and it has cocoa fiber, um, other trace minerals needed for microfauna and plants. And it also has pieces of coral in it that hermit crabs can eat. But we also have the 10 quart version. This is not the version that is included in the kit, but it can be purchased separately. Um, this one does not have sand mixed in. It's great for larger tanks. This will be, has to be combined with a um, 50 pound bag of play sand. The play sand brand we like to use is Quickcrete. It, um, it's nice and fine. It doesn't have a bunch of rocks in it and it usually comes pretty dry. A lot of um, sand that you can find at local stores is really wet and we like that our, um, that we can get the dry sand because you'll need to set up the tank uh, with dry sand so that there's not too much moisture in the substrate. In our kit, the, it calls for four of these, so you won't have to do any of the mixing at home. It's already done for you, and all you have to do is put the bags in. So this is what the sandlet looks like outside of the bag, as you can see. It's a little bit on the dry side. If I squeeze it, it just runs through my fingers. And hermit crabs need to molt. They need to be able to bury into the sand and molt and have a little um, cave for them under the sand. So if it's this fine, it will not, um, it's not the right consistency for them. So you'll have to add some water. So it's kind of guesswork though. You should always go under rather than over because if you put too much water in, then you'll have to take some out and redry it. So add little bits at a, at a time. And you'll want to mix it in. All right, so I think this is about where you're, you'll want it to be. Um, a lot of people say that you should have the sand at sandcastle consistency, though it depends on where you make that sandcastle, because if you have it too close to the water, it's going to be really wet. So instead of sandcastle consistency, I like to poke the sand. So if you can poke it and there's a, the indentation of your finger is left behind, then that will be suitable for molting, because that's what they do. They'll make a tunnel and it needs to keep its shape. So if you can poke it, and the sand doesn't collapse in on itself, you're probably where you need to be at. Next, um, there's a few things that you will need that come with the kit to set up the tank, and I would recommend before, um, you know, diving into things and putting spots and like putting things into permanent spots, um, I would review the items that you have and see where you like it. So, some things hermit, crab will, hermit crabs will need, they will need two water dishes. Um, a lot of people think they just need one, but they will need two separate ones, uh, one for fresh water and one for salt water. These are the Zoomed Repti Ramps. Um, we really like them here at Josh's Frogs because they have a gradient, so hermit crabs are able to walk up and into them and out 
um, without drowning. A lot of people use um, hermit crab sponges in very shallow dishes, worried about hermit crabs drowning. Um, you shouldn't be concerned about that. You shouldn't have to use a sponge. They love deep pools of water. All they need is a way to climb out because they're very good climbers. So, um, so two dishes. Um, I'll think about it maybe right here, maybe one on the other side. And let's see, got a little coconut cave here. Once I even know where I want these, I'll take the, um, the plastic off of them. Maybe we could have it right here. And um, this is a piece of choya wood. It's from a cactus, and not only is it a fun thing for them to climb on, they can also eat it. Um, they'll eat just about anything, including wood and leaf litter. So this will benefit as a cute decoration. And then for the very small hermit crabs, a hidey hole, something to climb on, something to eat. So it's a very useful piece of decor. Another thing we have, since hermit crabs do like climbing so much, we have a 3D background that will, it's called the cocoa planter mat. So not only can we put some plants in it, but they will also love to climb on it. So I'm gonna take this out. Now this is the 20 by 20 size, and as you know, this is an 18 by 18 tank, so it's gonna be a little big. It will need a little bit of trimming to get it to fit, but this way it will cover in the entire background. So I'm gonna start cutting here. All right, so I had to trim this down to size a bit, but this will be the background for the terrarium. And it is a little big, so some sand will have to be taken out of the back here. So you definitely want it to be a snug fit. If it's too loose, it won't hold itself up. This cocoa fiber is, um, I believe, um, really resistant to breaking down or rotting or growing mold. So I'm not concerned that it's going to be in the substrate. Um, to help hold it in place. Yeah, I definitely recommend the background going in first before you start laying anything else out. As you can see, it's not going anywhere now. There, now you can work on placing the decor back where you want it. Make sure all the tags off of things. Make sure the water bowls are level where you place them so that um, they can hold as much water as possible. Hermit crabs are very shy creatures, so if you leave their tank bare and empty, they probably won't come out as much. You won't see them because they're hiding, so you definitely want to give them lots of hiding spaces. It may look cluttered, or it may look like there's too much going on, but they are going to love it. So you can set it there for now. The kit also comes with a large piece of cork bark. This is another great thing for them to climb. This is going to be different for every kit, so you'll definitely have to play with it and see where you like it because it might have a different shape than the one I have here. Um, this is a food dish. It's a Zoomed Repti Rock. It has nice shallow sides so that they can climb in and out easily. And it also has a lot of space to have different types of food. They like having a lot to choose from. So um, a dish this size, you'll be able to have lots of food choices for them. Sit up front here. And um, we also recommend providing a separate bowl or small dish for calcium. They need calcium on hand at all times and it helps their exoskeleton. They, as um, they grow, they need to molt and shed their exoskeleton and that's a lot of calcium they lose. So they always need extra calcium. And often the food will go bad before calcium does. Calcium can last a long time, so you'll want it in a separate dish um, so that um, if you have to throw the food away because it got old, um, that you don't have to keep throwing away your calcium. So I'm gonna have a dish here. Now comes the fun part. Um, Josh's Frog's bio bedding um, has been tested on many sorts of plants and we have found some and it'll be 
um, included in this kit three plants. Um, these will do best in the substrate with minimal watering and care. They're also non-toxic for hermit crabs because hermit crabs may want to nibble on them or eat dead leaves that fall off. So you want the plants to be hardy and non-toxic and we have one here. Um, here's a spider plant. In the kit for this tank it might be a spider plant or it might be an aloe. It should also come with a cryptanthus. Um, this one is pink, so it'll look really pretty. It has nice, tough leaves, so if a hermit crab crawls on it, they'll do just fine. And we also have bromeliads. These um, also do well in the habitat, and they can either be planted or mounted, like epiphytes, in the wild. So I'm gonna work on getting these plants ready. For the spider plant or the aloe that you receive, you will need to remove all the soil that it comes with. The soil is um, not hermit crab safe, so we'll have to take that out. All right, so now that you have most of the soil out, it doesn't have to be perfect, just most of it. You can even rinse the plant if you would like to. Um, the next thing we recommend is that for plants that have large root systems, um, in the wild, while hermit crabs, of course, live next to plants, um, our tanks are a much smaller habitat for them. And if um, plants with really long roots are in the tank for a long time, they can take over and they can limit molting space for your crabs. So I like um, these clay pots we sell. Um, they do not have any holes in the bottom, so they'll hold the roots of the plants well. So you can just grab some of the sand that you already have in here. And pot the plant. Now you may think this seems silly, to pot the plant in a pot and then put it back in. Why don't we just use the other soil? Well, the other soil is, um, like I said, not hermit crab safe. And just because this plant is in a pot doesn't mean the hermit crabs won't try to go into the pot. They do like digging. And if they feel there's room for them to sit in the pot, they will go into it. So that's why it's important to have the hermit crab safe substrate in here as well. The pot is also going to help with watering because um, the hermit crab, the environment for hermit crabs is enclosed because they'll have these glass doors, they'll have the glass top, and um, humidity will have a hard time escaping, which while it's good for the crabs, it means the substrate can be very wet. If you have plants and you continuously water the plants, the substrate will just hold on to all to that moisture until it's, it floods. Flooding means that the water level rises and it's instead of um, just holding moisture, it'll be full of water and you do not want that to happen. So the nice thing about having something like this in the pot is that you are able to carefully take it out every once in a while when it needs to be watered or if you think you have a very steady hand, you can water it in the habitat just in the pot um, for a, minimally without splashing. So this plant is gonna be a little bit larger. That's why I put it in the back so it doesn't take up a whole bunch of space. And then for the next one, this plant also has soil that will need to be removed. There you go. And as you can see for this one, it has very short roots and it will continue to have very short roots for most of its life. So this one can go directly in the substrate. Let's see. I'm just gonna have my log over here, so I'm gonna put it right up front here. This one will not need as much watering as the spider plant will. And since the substrate holds on to moisture, you may find that you water it or mist it very rarely. So for 
the bromeliad, I'm going to plant it on the background. That's what I like about these backgrounds so much. They are very um, textured, so they can hold the plant really well. I'm going to take some of our sphagnum moss. This will help keep the plant's roots from drying out. Just get a little bit of it. I'm going to wet it down. And I was thinking of putting bromeliad about right, about right here. So take your scissors, you make a little indent for it. I just want to wrap the base of it in the moss. And nestle it. There. And this may need to be either removed on occasion to mist it, or you can mist it very lightly. But again, you don't want to mist the tank too much because there's already a lot of moisture that will already be in here. And um, the sphagnum moss is not just for the plants. Hermit crabs also really like sphagnum moss. So I take a nice chunk of it. Wet that too. I like to put it in their coconut hide so that when they go in here, they'll have um, like a little nest. They'll bury themselves in it and it'll be extra humid if they want it to be wetter. Next, you want to add in leaves. A lot of people think hermit crabs live on beaches. Um, in fact, they mostly go to beaches to access salt water and spawn in the wild and they primarily will live in the forest where they eat um, lots of things like leaves. Live oak leaves are a safe hermit crab leaf. So not only will these leaves provide hiding spaces for the microfauna we're going to put in next, they'll be also be a food source for hermit crabs. So anywhere that there's extra space, just throw them down. You can never have too many leaves. Another thing you can do with this moss is if you have these pockets open here, you can make more little nesting sites for them. I use this background for my hermit crabs at home and I will often find them snuggled into the pockets. And so once everything is set up where you like it, um, the next part will be to make it officially bioactive. We have um, springtails um, that these will be a part of the kit. It won't be this container of springtails, but there will be a smaller dish. And springtails are great for hermit crab enclosures because they will eat mold. Um, mold likes warm, humid environments, and that is exactly what hermit crabs live in. And hermit crabs will drag their food around, they'll take it out of the dish, and um, of course, you know what happens when food is left out too long, gets moldy, so these will help keep your hermit, tab, hermit crab habitat clean. The kit will come with a small um, dish that will have springtails on, I think, cocoa fiber or possibly another substrate. that will be much easier to get out than the charcoal for this. The second um, bug or cleanup crew that will come with the kit will be isopods. Um, they will also come in a small dish about this size, and they will be the dwarf whites. They'll be really small, so if bugs bother you, um, you'll hardly even be able to see them because they're super tiny, the size of, I don't know, rice basically, and they will be hiding most of the time. And they will take care of larger things your hermit crabs leave behind, like um, pieces of food, droppings. So they will eat all the larger and slightly things that you don't want to see in your hermit crab tank. Um, I've, however, I really enjoy bugs and I love seeing them being active in my tank. 
So I have here powder oranges. These are small, but they're not quite as small as the dwarf whites. And they're gonna be more active. And they're a pretty color of orange. That's why they're called powder oranges. And um, you definitely wanna keep smaller, more docile uh, isopods with your hermit crabs. Um, if you have larger ones or ones that are more protein hungry, like um, the dairy cows, they could um, bother your hermit crab while they're molting and soft. But the um, powder oranges, powder blues, Oreo crumbles, whiteouts, these will mainly stay on the surface of the sand and they're small and pretty much harmless to your hermit crabs. So these are also on sphagnum moss, but I'm gonna take these and sphagnum moss in the tank. And They, they will establish pretty quickly. And if you ever have too many isopods, you can take pieces of decoration like this, they'll probably hide out under it, and you can shake them off into another container and remove them. If you did take the lid off like I did during the building process, you wanna put it back on to make sure the humidity will stay, start staying in, so be ready for your hermit crabs. The next thing you want to add is your heating pad. I personally like the heating pad that comes in this kit because it doesn't have any of the um, adhesive on either side. Um, I don't like the ones with adhesive because once you put them on, then you can't get them off and I'm an indecisive person. So um, I know you can't see it because I already have the background on it, so I'll demonstrate on the side of the tank. Um, while it is called an under the tank heater, you do not want to put this under the tank. Um, sand is not conductive, so if you put this under the tank, the air will stay cold and the sand will become too hot. And if the sand is too hot, this could again harm the hermit crabs while they're molting. So you want to put this, mom, um, you could put it on the side. I like putting it on the back because I think it's, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. So um, this fits perfectly um, width-wise and also above the substrate um, for the entire back of the tank. You can see the substrate line is down here and the mat is up here. And that will heat the air most efficiently. So you wanna put it on the back and then I usually use um, duct tape to keep it in place. I do not have that with me at the moment though. So. You want the heating pad on uh, the back of the tank above the substrate. And then one of the last items in the kit will be the light. Hermit crabs um, are mainly nocturnal creatures and while they would appreciate UVB, UVB is hard to accomplish in a hermit crab setup because of the glass lid the glass lid will block any of the beneficial UVB coming through. So um, I like to set up hermit crab habitats with a basic LED light. So this will provide nice white light for them during the day. And then you'll turn it off at night to provide a 12 hour day, 12 hour night cycle to mimic the outside world. And the nice thing about these, Josh's frogs grow green lights is that they'll also be really good for your plants. Now, not included in a kit is a timer. If you are a forgetful person or busy and are worried that um, you won't, you'll forget to turn the light off or turn it on, uh, you can connect this to a timer, so that'll do it for you. There, you can see how nice it lights things up in here. So like I said, while hermit crabs are nocturnal, so while the light is on, you will likely not see them, but that's okay. One of the last items in the kit will be our Josh's Frogs Hermit Crab Salt. This is not table salt, it's not aquarium salt, it's marine salt. And this will um, mimic the ocean for the hermit crabs. And it also comes with a scoop. Um, the instructions on the bag say to mix um, one scoop, which would be half a cup, so half a cup per one gallon of water. 
I have done the math and for um, a 16 ounce container, I will need three teaspoons or one tablespoon of salt. Um, so if you have small pools like we do in here, they will be, this will be the um, perfect amount for one of the pools. If you have um, house water and it's um, city water, you also need a dechlorinator to get rid of the chlorine in the water and just give it a little shake. Just one drop should be good for the small little bit of water. And I think it's about 15 minutes to be effective, actually. You also want to mix the salt in because it'll sink to the bottom. You'll want to choose one of your pools to be fresh water and salt water. If you, so they'll, they'll look the same. So if you're a forgetful person or think you might mix it up, you can take a Sharpie and write on the glass, fresh and salt, so that um, you'll remember in the future. So let's see, this one got a little dirty. There we go, so I'll make this one my salt water pool. There we go, and this will be my fresh water pool. These pools of water will help with humidity in your habitat because they will slowly evaporate over time. And um, the last item in the kit is the, um, it's a, this is a combo meter, so it measures heat and humidity. And this will let you know um, if your tank is too humid or too dry, too hot, too cold, and it will really help you um, make good decisions about what you need to do. So if you find that your tank is too dry, maybe you live somewhere that has it's really low humidity and it's sucking humidity out of your tank more than your pools can keep up with, you can add um, bubblers to your pools. We don't include this in the kit, that's something separate you can do. Um, it's for fish tanks. There's a, um, an air pump, some air line, and two bubbler stones, and you can set those up in your pools to help the water evaporate faster, and they'll increase humidity in your tank. All right, so you want to put this in the tank, and it can stay in here permanently, so you can always know what your habitat is at. The Exoterra tanks have some um, holes in the back so that wires can go through them. So you want to wait a few minutes for this to get an accurate reading and um, it should be somewhere between 75 and 85 degrees in temperature and between 70 and 80 percent in humidity. So we'll sit here and let it um, get an accurate reading. Uh, however, I wouldn't recommend putting in your hermit crabs on the first day you set it up. I would recommend letting the tank sit for two or three days because um, sometimes when you first set it up, it can have um, false readings, like the humidity might be too high because you just put a bunch of water in the substrate. So um, I would recommend um, watching your combo meter over the next couple of days and see what it settles on. So now that it's been a few days and you feel confident about the temperature and humidity readings, it's time to put your hermit crabs in. At Josh's Frogs, we have captive bred hermit crabs. And um, this is a little unusual because most hermit crabs you'll find in the store in the pet shop are going to be caught from the wild. And these will need to be quarantined before putting them in your tank. Um, because a lot of times they're already sick and they won't make it. And if they bury themselves in your tank, you're not, you're not gonna be sure if they are still alive or not. But at Josh's Frog, since we only have captive red animals, these ones are going to be healthy and ready to go. For a tank this size, I would recommend between two and four hermit crabs. You should never have one hermit crab, otherwise they might get lonely. Um, and this tank is about equivalent to 20 gallons of space. And these hermit crabs are going to be very small. As they grow up, they will eventually need a bigger tank or deeper substrate. Um, at this size, um, a, a, a 20 gallon tank should be enough for maybe four of them. These hermit crabs are part of our captive breeding program. Um, so they have 
not been bred at our facility here. They come from the um, first person to have successfully bred hermit crabs in captivity, Mary Akers, and looks like he is ready to go. There you go. You want to carefully set them in here. And then you want to put some fresh food and calcium in their dish and you should be good to go. So now you know how to set up the Josh's Frogs 18 by 18 by 18 bioactive hermit crab kit. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible. So we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.